If you were to visit YTMND.com for the first time today, you would probably never expect to find out that this was once one of the most popular websites on the entire internet. Top rated sites this week? None. Most recent news update? April 1st, 2014. Today's most visited site, the 404 page. YTMND, you're the man now, dog, has become an internet ghost town. Little more than a time capsule of what it once was. But YTMND's role in shaping internet culture cannot be denied. It stimulated the creative energy of a generation and helped to nurture the seeds of some of today's meme aesthetics. And its founder, Max Goldberg, was a pioneer when it came to fighting for free speech on the internet. So today, let's take a trip back to the early 2000s and look at the rise and fall of YTMND. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. With new legislation like Article 13 threatening the free flow of information online, what's left of old websites like YTMND may soon become inaccessible in certain parts of the world. But by using Nord servers which are located all around the globe, you can access websites that might be blocked in your region. Additionally, NordVPN's encryption can help keep your data secure when connecting to public Wi-Fi. Just go to nordvpn.com slash wang for 75% off a three-year deal and use code wang for an extra month. Chocolate. Late one night a few weeks ago, instead of sleeping or working on a new video like I should have, I was making dumb meme videos with this children's learn how to speak Spanish clip. Cocodrilo. And after making this, I realized that this format is literally the same exact thing as MEDM. It was one of my favorite formats from that site, and it got me thinking about how much YTMND really shaped my sense of humor, and for that matter, meme culture in general. But to tell the story of YTMND, we need to go back before the website existed, before social media as we knew it existed, uh, back to a time when... The internet as a whole was just a lot less centralized. At that time, one main type of content that would go viral was goofy one-off websites. Stuff like, hello my future girlfriend, hamster dance, I kiss you with my ear, I like milk, that's a ripoff of my ear. As these types of websites grew in popularity, a lot more people tried their hand at making them. And one of these people was a young New York-based programmer named Max Goldberg. It was in 2001, when Max was only 18 years old, that he created two such websites. You're the man now dog.com, which at first was just ASCII text that said you're the man now dog, and then later became the more iconic picture of Sean Connery repeating the line from Finding Forrester over and over again. The other one was DustinDiamond.com, in which Max took on the persona of Saved by the Bell's Dustin Diamond. Hello, welcome to my homepage, and welcome to DustinDiamond.com, my homepage on the internet. I'm famous actor Dustin Diamond. You have probably seen me on TV. You may have seen me in hit TV shows such as Saved by the Bell, where he played the crazy character Shreech. You may be asking yourself how you can get into acting. Well, coming this fall, I will tell you all how you too can become a famous superstar and sex symbol like me. Update, we added a guest book for my fans to say hi. Sign the guestbook. And both those sites were pretty popular at the time. You're the man now dog.com, perhaps a little bit more because people would like to do this prank where they would take the website, make it to the homepage of every single computer in a computer lab, then people open it up and it's just, you're the man now dog, you're the man now dog, you're the man now dog. It spread a lot more, but it would be dustandiamond.com that would be a lot more consequential. That's because in late 2003, Max would receive a cease and desist from the real Dustin Diamond over the website. And in what would eventually become a trademark Max Goldberg move, he completely ignored the cease and desist and kept the website up. And this prompted Dustin Diamond and his lawyers to file a formal complaint. The complaint was filed by Dustin Diamond on February 19th of 2004, and it claimed that Max was impersonating him through emails, trying to extort him for the URL and ruining his family-friendly name. In particular because of comments on his guest books such as... Dustin Diamond, I love you. You are a young Jack Nicholson. I want to squirt my load in your eye and then toss your salad. Kurt, you are a fucking dickhead and I hope you die slowly and painfully and piss blood till you bleed out of your ears. You piss-sniffing wankstain. You are a fucking dickhead and I hope you die very slowly and painfully. 
Zoinks! You get the idea. Max responded by debunking a number of Dustin Diamond's claims, and as he would many times in the future, arguing for fair use. This response is hereby submitted for decision in accordance with the Uniform Domain Name Dispute Resolution Policy. It is unfortunate that Dustin Diamond's slick, high-priced legal team is refusing to acknowledge the obvious. That DustinDiamond.com is clearly a parody site and electronic art installation. Mr. Goldberg has never attempted to use the site for personal gain, either financial or otherwise, and has, in fact, lavished considerable amounts of time and money on the project without seeking any recompense. Yet, Mr. Diamond's legal team are attempting to destroy this widely acclaimed creative project through a campaign of harassment, intimidation, and blatant falsehood. In a desperate attempt to prove that the domain is being used in bad faith, Mr. Diamond's attorneys claim that Mr. Goldberg offered to sell the domain for $1,800. This is a lie, as is demonstrated by their inability to provide even a scrap of documentation. Mr. Diamond's attorneys claim that Mr. Goldberg has written and posted emails posing as Dustin Diamond. This too is a lie, and this too they assert without being about to offer any evidence. The complaint is without merit. It is a heavy-handed attempt to use money and celebrity, albeit an exceedingly limited kind of celebrity, to suppress artistic freedom and the well-established First Amendment right to create and disseminate parodies of those who are famous, powerful, or otherwise in the public eye. This right has been defended by ICANN itself, which specifies that use of domains for parody purposes is in fact a good faith use. Ultimately, the courts found in favor of Max. The panel accepts respondents' argument that the outrageous, ugly, and low-tech graphics and numerous errors and misspellings as well as the sheer absurdity of the site's claim that Dustin Diamond is a famous superstar and sex symbol clearly signal that the site is not meant to be taken seriously. Whether the site is regarded as parody, satire, or critical commentary, and notwithstanding respondents' assertion that lawyers are notoriously bad at understanding how humor works, this panel finds that legitimate non-commercial fair use commentary is involved. Thus, DustinDiamond.com remained online with the added line, this site is in no way affiliated with Dustin Diamond. As for Dustin Diamond, he would go on to stop caring about his precious family-friendly reputation and make a porn film called Saved by the Smell, in which he gave a girl a dirty Sanchez. Max Goldberg would not make a porno. Instead, he proceeded to register DustinDiamondSucks.com, which included the court documents, a summary of the case, and a press release. This press release contained the announcement that on April 10th, Max would be releasing a new art site called YTMND.com. And on April 10th, YTMND.com was released and gave users the tools to make sites just like his original You're the Man Now Dog.com. Users could upload their own image, their own sound, and choose some big zooming text. And most of these early YTMDs were very simple, with just the static image, or a very simple looping gif. Paired up with either a song, or a quote. And this was a format that came to be known as the classic YTMND, a distinction that would eventually become necessary as the sites became more and more complex. You see, although the tools the site provided were very simple, creativity finds a way. You start getting YTMDs with more complicated gifts like Tom Cruise Kills Oprah, which matches up Tom Cruise's conniption fit that he had on the Oprah Winfrey show with Emperor Palpatine. You get Chunk is Indestructible, which features Chunk from the Goonies doing the truffle shuffle deflecting Picard's bullets. And then after that, when you get a whole slew of derivatives where other people are indestructible. This was a common practice central to the site's culture known as a YTMND fad. Popular fads included What is Love? Catch That Man, LOL Internet, Brian Peppers, Safety Not Guaranteed. And then you had PTKFGS or Punch the Keys for God's Sake! This one was another line from Finding Forrester that went into a whole alternate YTMND dimension. In this dimension, all the popular YTMND fads are just a little bit different. And according to one very popular YTMND, this universe was created by the Safety Not Guaranteed guy, giving it some of the deepest lore of all YTMND fads. And as you can see with this site, they've gotten way, way more complex than the Picard song days. 
And this site is a good example of something that became a growing problem on YTMD, and that's synchronization. I don't think that when Max created the original YTMD that he ever considered that people would eventually turn them into these choppy little mini-movies, so the site wasn't designed for that. But the users came up with all different kinds of workarounds for this. For example, some people would have you refresh the page in case the assets didn't load at the same time. Some needed you to only watch it in Firefox, some needed you to only watch it in Internet Explorer, and if you want to watch it in Opera, you're probably fucked. And in some ways, YTMD's trending towards being more and more complex start to divide the user base. Some people preferred the classic YTMDs, and in their view, if you wanted to make a video, why don't you just make a video? Others preferred the new wave of stuff, and then you even had some people that were experimenting with this artsy, audio-visual project type of YTMD. And eventually, as YTMD was ascending more and more towards its peak of popularity, Max would address these issues with new updates. He added a preloader so there would be no more need to refresh pages. And he also allowed people to label their sites as classic YTMD so the people who only wanted that content would be able to see just that content. At this point, Max would update the site pretty frequently with new features, design improvements, and he had a blog where he would keep the user base informed about what was going on behind the scenes. Yet despite his constant hard work, there is always a sense that he was somewhat reluctant to be the guy at the head of such a large, growing community. And by his own admission, sometimes he actually did hate it. The unexpected popularity of a website that he humbly referred to as an art site when he first announced it completely took over his life and became a massive burden. He became a victim of his own success, and all of a sudden he's putting in 16-hour workdays just to get things working. He's having to come up with ways to offset the massive server costs, and when you're as free speech-oriented as Max was, it can be hard to get advertisers sometimes. In an interview with Gizmodo, Max recalled one specific time he was talking to a potential advertiser who went to YTMND.com and found that the top site at the time was Raiden Spinners, which contained the contents of Meatspin.com. He did not secure that deal. But despite his occasional resentment of his own creation, he was also fiercely protective of it. Shades of Max's response to Dust and Dime would often come out when he would respond to the companies that would send him legal threats. Such as the time Scholastic threatened to sue over Harry Potter spoilers. Hey! Snape kills Dumbledore! No! And he responded by asking them if they would be taking him to normal court or special wizard court. Or the time Pez threatened to sue him over a Hitler Pez dispenser image, so his response was to start a contest for users to make the best parody Pez dispenser. And then there were the times that he completely reamed the Church of Scientology and E-Bombs World, which I've already covered on this channel. Despite the burden that it often was, Max cared a lot about YTMND and was constantly working on making sure that it was running smoothly and that it had new features. And he would eventually add more social networking type features to the site, like activity logs and profiles and frenemies. However, in 2007, users gradually began to lose interest and migrate to other platforms, and YTMD was on the decline. It would never reach those 2006 peaks again. And it was on April 1st of 2014, after developing a nerve impingement in his ass from sitting down programming so much, and after the site could no longer financially sustain itself, that Max made his final blog post. Salutations, buds. In 2001, I registered the domain www.yourthemannowdog.com after seeing Sean Connery perform his famous line, You're the Man Now, Dog, in a digital trailer for Finding Forrester. I didn't know what to do with it, and for the first few months it hosted nothing but some ASCII text in the form of a landing page. Shortly after that, I arrived at the format it has remained in to this day. Ten years ago today, on April 1st, 2004, I registered the domain YTMND.com. It was intended to be a quick little website that would host small sites that were in the same format as YouTheManNowDog.com. These sites had been popping up rapidly at the time, and just as rapidly disappearing due to the lack of hosting. Now we're nearing almost 1 million YTMNDs made, and almost a third of my life working on and maintaining a site that was started as a joke. I didn't expect this site to last as long as it has, but even as our community is dwindling in size and quality, I find myself with a desire to work on YTMND more often. I think it's time to begin another development cycle on YTMND. 
Ample time has passed since I've done any real development. I'd like to dispose of Flash altogether now that the browser audio support is more widespread, but converting the entire site over is not an insignificant amount of work. The last few weeks have had me doing system administration. The wiki server that we were fundraising for suddenly began having issues and is being RMA'd now. And t-shirt fulfillment. There is a lot more server setup slash virtualization to do in the coming weeks, but it should hopefully reduce our bills and make things run more smoothly in the future. I wanted to write more of a news post on this the first day of the 10th year of YTMD's birth, but frankly, I procrastinated and am now exhausted from juggling this and work and the obituary. I'll update in a day or two when I get the original slash contrib directory back up and running. That update never came. But despite Max abandoning the project in 2014, the site is still operational. Perhaps Max just didn't have it in him to stop paying the costs out of pocket. Some of the sites don't work properly anymore, and you can't make a new count after recapture version 1 stopped being supported, but it's there. And sometimes an old user will drop by to make something new. And Max is aware that there is still some semblance of a community. I think the people who are still using it regularly are like people with mental problems, Goldberg said of the users who, until recently, have kept YTMND in the black. There's still people trying to cause drama on there, trolling and that kind of stuff. The only reason I could see that would motivate them to do that is if you were a little bit crazy. Besides being a time capsule, I don't really see a reason for it to continue to exist. It seems like the internet has moved on, he pauses, sounding overwhelmed. And I've moved on too. I don't have much interest in the site beyond it being good memories. Today, Max Goldberg keeps a very low profile online and can be kind of hard to track down, but it is known that he's still doing freelance programming work. And in that interview with Gizmodo, he remarked that he didn't want YTMND to be his obituary. But every time I think back to the heyday of YTMND and how Max fought for fair use before most people even knew what that was, how his creations helped shape internet culture as a whole, I can't help but think that he just doesn't get enough credit for what he did. Anyway, if you like this video, you will definitely like my other YTMND videos. Go check those out. Bye bye